Okay, so I've been playing uh, with some stuff in Unreal Engine 5. First of all, I'm not very impressed with Quixel. Uh, honestly, from those three, uh, it is very hard to say which one is actually looking the best. And if you have trouble saying, like, this is obviously a low, because I import a low, a medium, and a nanite mesh. So I mistaken this for nanite, but this is actually LOD5 mesh, and this is LOD8, and this is nanite. So it has better shadows, for sure, but except that, the geometry on it, like this looks more what I would expect in game. This looks just a bit odd. So I have this guy. I've been playing with animation retargeting. And you can see that this is the third person character, basically. And he's running the third person character animations and everything regarding those animations. And I have this robot guy. And this robot guy has uh, this animation blueprint. Let me. Oh, no, no, not this. Uh, robot guy rig. He has IK retarget rig. I still have to <laughs> definitely fix some things. There is a place for improvements. Um, because I just created very short uh, list of chains in compared to what the mannequin has. Um, and well, I have this that I've been playing around with. So this guy, uh, I, I still don't know how to do limits for those. So if I want elbow to go one direction, it's somehow set in the mannequin, but here I still don't know how to do it. So basically this guy got completely different structure of bones. He got double root. He got a lot of really funky stuff. He doesn't have proper fingers. Uh, he has shorter spine. You can see his clavicles being super long from his waist, basically. And he's in general a really awkward character. And uh, let me show you his... Oh, this is the animation graph. So just on one frame on the init, I am casting pound to character and just storing the mesh reference. And with this mesh reference uh, inside my character, oh, uh, inside my anim graph here, only thing I do is do retarget pose from mesh and I pinpoint which retarget that I'm using. So I'm using this one. So this is taking this guy and interprets him here. So this is the default mesh, the, the, this one, right? So this one in optimization has to have always tick pose and refresh bones if we want to hide them. If we want to, for example, only um, tick pose or only tick montages or only tick when uh, rendered, then we would have to hide him in different way. For example, we can scale this guy to zero. And scaling him to zero, unfortunately, still renders all his uh, triangles. So it's not being easy on the graphic cards, but we could hide him this way. But what I did, I did that he's always tick pose and refresh bones. And he is, of course, hidden in game. So he's absolutely excluded from the renderer, but his animation pose is still being calculated. And then we have this extra mesh that doesn't do anything. Um, he can have all the optimization techniques for animations. Um, he really doesn't have to always tick uh, pose and refresh bones, but a little bit like this. And you can do a lot of other um, optimization. So he is running this retargeter live. So it might not always look perfect, especially in this idle pose, because his elbows are completely broken. But when he's moving, <laughs> you can see that he's actually using the new mannequin animations for running, jumping, landing, additive, and he is touching feet to the ground. Uh, so he is using, um, copying the entire pose. So he's copying the IK as well. 
and he is copying everything from the origin. So I don't have to set up post process animation blueprint for him. I can just make, uh, I can just take, for example, animations that I prepared with uh, mannequin, the old mannequin uh, character, and I can at runtime retarget them to, for example, the studio characters or this guy who has different skeleton. So the compatibility is really nice. And there's one more option for compatibility. If I delete this guy, then the default character for this world will be again a third person character. Uh, and this third person character, let me just connect this event and show you something else. So here I am switching character every three seconds. So now I'm a female. And now I'm the mannequin and now I'm a character from the marketplace. And you can see that all of them are running same animations and they're even in sync, like in the same frame when they get updated. And they're being switched and the beauty of it is that uh, only the, the male and female characters have animation graph and there's only one animation graph set. Uh, the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin doesn't have animation graph at all. Uh, doesn't have any animation blueprint set up. And this guy is just uh, downloaded from Marketplace with nothing. So how this is being done is that within the skeleton, so if we go into characters and we go into our mannequin, and we go into, I think, meshes and skeleton, was it here? Uh, yeah, it was... No. Uh, was it here or was it somewhere else? Oh, it's in the skeleton itself. Sorry, it's not in the skeletal mesh. <clears throat> so here in skeleton... Mm, Was it here or maybe was it in the rig? Let's see, maybe it was in the rig. IK mannequin IK rig. And this is the hierarchy. No, it had to be somewhere here. Mm, window. Oh yeah, it's in asset details. That is normally hidden by default. You have to activate it in window. And here you have something that's called compatible skeleton. So that means that skeletons that uh, has similar chain of bones and they can have additional bones or less bones, but they need to have in general, uh, same name of the root bone and they need to follow the same uh, hierarchy. So for example, compatibility would be any character that is being downloaded from character creator tree uh, by the plugin. So with the compatibility with this mannequin or um, any character from marketplace that is uh, compatible with, with the mannequin. So the thing is that you no longer have to delete the skeleton and set skeleton for all those characters you might for some reason keep different skeletons so you could have i don't know different virtual bone setups or different retarget um, options because maybe the retarget options that you have for one character doesn't really work for another and you want to have a different set so now you can have this uh, compatibility and when this timer hits what i'm doing i'm setting skeletal mesh to one of those four meshes. And I'm setting cape visible only if it's the robot from Marketplace. And then I'm setting animation instant just to reset to ABP Manny. So 
So the default uh, Unreal Engine 5 mannequin, the, the first guy that you see loaded, uh, this guy. So they are running not their own native um, animation. Even Queen has her own animation blueprint that is the same as Manis, but it is her own. So it's, um, it's a bit different. And our uh, Unreal Engine 4 mannequin doesn't have animation blueprint at all. And our marketplace uh, mesh doesn't have as well. <coughs> all I did is set in this skeleton and in this skeleton compatibility, which is really cool. Now it's uh, a lot easier to share animations and uh, a lot easier to set up characters uh, that are somehow unconventional and not compatible with animations that you have. You just have to put some time and effort into creating the IK rig and that everything just works. Uh, so yeah, I'm doing more experiments with Unreal Engine 5, but uh, there are some wins, there are some loses. Like um, all the assets you see here, those like th this is pretty nice quality. Those are, I don't know, like all this, it, it doesn't look that impressive and this is a 10 gigabytes just just those assets and this grass and this uh, one material so I don't know if it's worth 10 gigabytes um, there's definitely place for improvements when it comes down to how even the plugin for Quixel works like I set some settings, I would like it to remember those settings and when I start downloading the next uh, mesh, uh, the settings got reset and sometimes he downloads the preview mesh and never downloads the full nanite mesh like this one. This is just a low poly um, LOD5 preview mesh and I wanted to download this gate as nanite and it just never did it. It just downloaded the preview mesh and left it like this. Uh, uh, pretty happy with itself that it's done its job. Um, so yeah, having problems uh, here, but animations, amazing tools. I, I can't wait to make new tutorials with them. I just wanted to share this real fast. Uh, thanks for listening and have a good night.